This is Off Planet Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer, and today we're starting a new little mini-series. Uh, just a few weeks back, we had a really great show, the Alchemical Insider Show with Steve and Chris Creamy, and during that show, we decided we would do a series on sacred geometry. So they're here today to do that, and what we're going to do is in the public hour, the first hour, they are going to give a lesson. That's how kind of this series will go. There'll be a lesson on one of the geometries in the first hour, and uh, Chris will do some drawing, and Steve will be giving us some, uh, you know, uh, stories and, and histories and mythologies about some of this, and Chris will have some things to say too. And I will be the student, and I will simultaneously practice a, practice a little bit of restraint and try not to interject every two seconds like I tend to, but also they have requested that I be myself and interject when I feel it necessary, so I will be the student and ask the questions and, and uh, maybe the, whatever thoughts pop to mind, you know, when, when they're sharing some of their stories and whatnot, uh, we'll do that. And then the patrons hour uh, with each show, there'll be kind of a, a segment where we talk about the way some of this plays out out in the real world and in our lives and so today the segment will be on the sacred geometry of sports since we're in the heat of the summer but uh the, we're recording this probably a few weeks before it will go out but this week we have the all-star game in baseball and we have Wimbledon going on with tennis and these are two sports uh that are really based on geometry and so we're going to discuss the sacred geometry of sports in the second hour so stick around for that and now we're going to get started and, and how I want to start this out is just have Chris and Steve give us a little bit of a background of how they became interested in sacred geometry and sort of th their background and studies with that. And uh, I've chosen them to do this with. I'm interested in sacred geometry for a long time. I feel I have a lot of intuitive sort of understanding or knowledge of it. But when I've gone looking for lessons or teachers, I haven't found one that doesn't bother me. And when I, I started talking with Chris and Steve, I, I came to realize that they come at it from a really neutral, holistic space. And so I thought maybe I had found my teachers for this, and hopefully they'll be great teachers for all of you. So Chris and Steve, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, and this is the beginning of our uh, Sacred Geometry series. I'm really happy to be doing this with you guys. Thanks, Emily. We are so excited yeah, for this. Yeah, this is a great opportunity to kind of give back. Uh, we've, you know... I guess really quick, it just dawned on me how I got into sacred geometry. I've completely forgotten, but um, way back in, you know, in 1985, Chris and I, our first date actually was a month backpacking in Turkey. And we both came to absolutely fall in love with, with Turkey. And I had the, we both also love Turkish carpets and the geometry of the carpets and what's mm -hmm. behind them. And so uh, when we came home, I started working on, um, let's just uh, a, a very uh, complicated novel that has to do with the Turkish carpet Ooh. And, and trying to, yeah, it's be good. and so I came across this book by Keith Critchlow called, um, uh, it was, it was, uh, it's, it's, it's on uh, Islamic, Islamic ge geometrical form. I love it. Yeah. Right. And it was a brilliant book, very difficult. It was way over my head at the time, but that's how I kind of came across the concept of it and the geometrical forms behind the carpets, behind the Islamic patterns and things like that. So, and then um, when we moved down to Asheville in 1999, um, we, uh, well, we actually, I was walking downtown and I saw a poster for a, for a, uh, back in the day when people put up posters when they were giving um, workshops. Yep. And that's how you got people, especially in downtown Asheville. And I saw this poster and, you know, the red light flashed, you have to go to this. And I went to it, it was given by this um, gentleman named uh, um, Robert Gilbert, who has uh, the Vesica I don't know, organization found. He calls it Vesica and he still gives a lot of workshops on sacred geometry, biogeometry, uh, mm -hmm. which is another topic that we can get into at some point. Really yeah. Very sophisticated. Um, yeah. 
anyway, took the workshop and met this group of, of people there who became our core group of friends in Asheville, and they had a sacred geometry study group. Mm-hmm. So we joined that, so, um, so Chris can, can, can give credit to, uh, to them, if you'd like, to oh, who, God. Who, who taught us there. But especially this woman, Very named, so. this woman named Marsha Andriola who did the drawings. So we did it, met weekly, and then uh, every other week for a while. And the drawings are meditations. Mm-hmm. So the, the way we'd like to do this, this is the practice of sacred geometry. We're not ta- we will be talking about it, but this is the practice. And the practice of sacred geometry is doing the drawings. Mm-hmm. So in the ancient world, it would have been done, say, in ancient Greece, it would have been done maybe in, in, in a sandbox. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, using pebbles and things like that to work the mathematics, because you got to remember that um, the numerical system of that time did not have, you know, it was what, until, it wasn't until the medieval times that we set up, you know, the, the tens, hundreds, ones, mm-hmm. the way that we set up our digits now. But back then, the mathematics had to be done in a, in a very different way. Um, than, than, you know, we learned as kids in, in mathematical classes. So, so I already have a question real fast. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about them doing it with pebbles in a sandbox, and so that's also probably what the Zen, a Zen garden is about, right? Like the way that they rake the lines in the sandbox and whatnot is a similar kind of thing, yes? Hmm. Similar, but not hmm. the same. Okay. I would say. My, my impulse is to say that the Zen rakings are a recapitulation of waveforms. Okay, yeah, right? yeah. Does that make sense? That yep. was the first thing that came into my mind when I thought yep. that. And um, not necessarily a structured geometrical gotcha. system. Gotcha. Okay, right? yeah. That's my thought. But anyway, there, I don't know if it's right or not. But, but there is, a, and Chris, well, Chris also uh, does um, Ikebana, 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 which is the Japanese flower arranging, and there is, there geometry, is geometry. There is geometry that. in that. And the thing is, it's like anything else. For, for them, as an art form, you hide the, the geometry behind it. If you look yes. at you know, Renaissance paintings, there are vesicas, there are shapes and lines, and, and you can study them embedded and behind all of the drawings. Yeah. Uh, Leonardo, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, so, so the art form is, though, is to, is to hide the geometry behind it, even yeah. though. It resonates through the painting and into you as a, as a, as you know a receiving of the art. Yeah, I like to think of it like a blueprint, yeah, like a house or any other structure, and that's your your blueprint upon which all the the fleshy world is is hanging. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, go ahead. It's like a you know a, it's like the framework of the house. Yes. So. As you guys can see, that uh, Chris has drawn a vesica Pisces here, and so that is going to be the oh, geometry, the right. ge- geometry that today's lesson will be on. And just so everybody knows, um, before this show airs, uh, you know, it's probably be t- uh, between about ten days to two weeks before this airs, I will have sent out a list of the supplies you need so you can draw along with us. And then there will also be some books that and some other information in history that. Uh, Chris and Steve think are important to this and that will be stuff to look at. You know, you can look at it before we, this airs or in between this and the next show. Uh, some of the books look very interesting. So I will make enough space between the shows that people can try and read, you know, some or all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to show this, that this is kind of like the end product of what we're going to work on today. And then Chris is going to start over and, you know, t- show us how to draw this and, yeah, you know, and both she and Steve will sort of, sort of narrate that. So do you want to introduce this? Yeah. Here? And then we'll also, um, I think Steve sent to you this list. This is an instruction list yes. for what steps we took and to achieve this. Yes. That will, yeah. That will go out. It's going to be. Yeah. Yeah, that'll hopefully go out as a file. Everything will go out, yeah. And we're going to be bouncing off this to create this drawing, to recreate this drawing. Yes. So, so the, when people watch the show, they can have this file printed out. It's very helpful. Yeah. And we're speaking it, and they can follow. Okay, now we're doing number one, we draw the horizon line. Number two, you do this. Number three, you do this. Okay. So this is really helpful for people who need to have a visual as well as auditory. Yes. 
So the so person I, who did the drawings that we learned from when we were practicing with this group, her name is Marsha Andriola, and she studied with this guy, Keith Critchlow, and got, I think she got some, London, a, PhD a PhD at the, at the, at the, at the school um, in, in London. And um, Kairos is his organization. And so anyway, but she was the best person to teach. She went very slowly, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to me, who's very mercurial, but Chris is Sagittarian. And so Chris will honor her teacher. And so oh, was, very much so. And, her, her, and she would write out the instructions, and she wouldn't move to the next step but until everybody was caught up. The important part for Chris is that in 10th grade, I took geometry, and it was Euclidean geometry. Mm -hmm. And... I was like a week late getting into the class. It was not my forte. And I ended up being put in what he called the clunky corner. Oh. <laughs> okay. So there were four of us in the clunky corner. And we accepted the class as a study hall. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to participate anymore. And I, it so traumatized me for any kind of math or geometry wow. that to this day, um, oh. I scramble numbers like nobody's business. So when we were taking these classes and Marsha was teaching us these drawings, she was so gentle and kind. Ah. She went so slowly and clearly mm -hmm. that I was actually able to keep up and to learn the craft to the point where seven, five, seven years later, we all went over to Chartres Cathedral in France and did a five-day workshop at the cathedral with Keith Critchlow, and I was able to keep up with a world-class geometer. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. So I had the opposite experience of geometry class. I took geometry in ninth grade, and I was always fairly good at math, um, and, but the geometry, I just took to it like that, right? And I had this teacher named Mr. Douglas. He was an old black man, right? He used to fall asleep in class. Oh. And, and so he was not actually teaching. So I would get up there because I seemed to understand it. And I would teach the class really fast and then climb up and move the clock ahead so that we, and we wait to go, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Douglas, this was my last period. Mr. Douglas, Mr. Douglas, you missed the bell. Right? Oh, just so we'd get to do it. oh my God. <laughs> so I, we would leave, get out like 15 minutes early or whatever. And so I may, have been, you know, I may be the person who has messed up the time field by setting the clock ahead <laughs> constantly. And, and, you know, but I, it just came naturally to me. And so I'd get up there and I'd show everyone else what to do and I'd do it quickly and then we'd leave class wow. early. And <laughs> that's, that's a that's fabulous story. <laughs> well, even when we were down here in Asheville and we were studying with Marsha and my other friend, Marnie Muller, she's another teacher who was exemplary and also Jane Weaver those three women were just incredible um, but so one day Marsha was doing a drawing and I I just like fell behind by one step and even though it was with gentle sweet loving Marsha my throat closed up and I started mm -hmm. to cry and I mm -hmm. boom and that's as an adult yeah but now I'm to the point where mm -hmm. I've made peace with that demon. So that's what happens that's to me when point. I have to talk about my feelings, Chris. <laughs> what you just really? described, yeah. Um, when I have to talk about my, like, my really deep interpersonal feelings, that's what happens to me. <laughs> well, see, I got past that demon, so okay. let's, you know, let's put those demons to rest. Yeah. Okay. All so, right, so guys, so here we go. Begin. So let's begin. We shall begin. Okay. All right, so, so, this, so this, the description of this drawing is the transcendental proportions from the vesica pisces and this is this is really elemental we can't see that so uh, uh, let's see tilt, tilt your computer a little there you go there That's you go okay. Wait, like maybe like a, a, a centimeter more i think so we can see that. there we go all right okay. now, and guys we recognize that so this appears a little bit far away so mm. from, you know, like she will, everything that is written there, they will announce clearly and let you know, we're going to move on to another page and start. Right. These gonna, yeah. yeah, This is just for you to absorb and, we'll, yeah. and we're going to recreate this entire thing. Yeah. And then yeah. we'll take a photo of it, maybe include it with everything else. That's it. Do. That's a good idea. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we're going to start. One. One. Here we go. <laughs> we're going to start with an opening. You could call it a mantra. We always started our classes with this, and is it from Plato? Is it? It's, it probably it could be from Plato, or you know, 
it's a it's it, it's it's very platonic anyway. Well, this is how we always opened our classes. We ask, we center ourselves. May we be guided by truth. May beauty be revealed to us, and may it result in the good. So beauty is always a revelation. So may beauty be revealed to us, but we we have to be guided by truth. We are not commanding anything. We're asking. We're requesting. It's just like when you start in a yoga class, uh, the yoga philosophy, the sutras, you know, there's a statement that's made. There's an opening salvo. There's a bell that's rung that the, that the other world's here. You make a request. May I enter? Okay, so now, yo- now yoga instruction. So you set your, your whole demeanor for this acceptance of instruction from the other realm. So may we be guided by truth. May beauty be revealed. And may it result in the good. So, yeah, truth, beauty, and goodness are, are three versions of the same thing, the highest ideal in, in, in Plato, you know, in the Platonic forms. So, so the drawing we're going to do today is transcendental proportions from the Vesica Pisces that will achieve or show us visually square root of two, square root of three, square root of five, and phi. And phi is the golden mean ratio. All right, and what happens, you know, so, um, and we learn those square roots as irrational numbers. And uh, sacred geometers use, uh, like to use the word transcendental numbers instead of irrational because of all the connotations and it's really not well think about for modern scientists it's irrational doesn't make any sense it's irrational right but from a spiritual perspective it's transcendent okay those are the realms that we can't reach in the physical so they transcend the physical and they're going to be an uplift for humanity okay so you have to understand that for pythagoras uh, so p- both Pythagoras and, say, uh, somebody like Galileo uh, both said that the universe is made of number, okay? Mm-hmm. But the difference between them, as far as I can tell, is that for Pythagoras, numbers are qualities, and for Galileo, numbers are quantities. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, in a very broad sense, but, the, but it's, it's useful to remember that. So, so, when, so when people are talking about numbers... And square root of two is 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 the transcendental two-ness, all right? And two-ness, duality. So there's so there's the numbers that make up this actual world, and then there are the numbers that are are the template, and the numbers that are the template are these square roots, and you know, so and they're they're transcendental because they don't repeat, right? You know, okay. like like pi, right? Okay. You know, they have computers working for like you know generations trying to find the repeating decimal of pi, you know, and it's just not happening. And I would just like to interject that when we say tunis by putting N- the, that, um, that on the end, N-E-S-S, that indicates to us that it's a living quality. Okay. It's not just a number two. It's not just uh, an object. It's not just two apples. Yeah. It's two mm-hmm. living apples. It's yeah. tunis. Okay. Yeah. So words are important. And mm-hmm. how we use words determines how we live and move through the world. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that's why when people say, oh, you create your own reality. Well, you do. Yeah. And how you do that, you do that through speech. Mm-hmm. So conscious speech is very important if you're looking to develop spiritually. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. all right. So all geometry drawing starts with the blank page. And the blank page is the absolute, the ineffable, right? Can't even talk about it. It's, 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 it's the divine in itself, right? So now, but we have to talk about it. So the first thing we do is draw what's called a horizon line. So for the purpose of this drawing and where the paper stands, so we're just going to draw it across, you know, just basically as, as level as you, you can eye it. And this, you can correlate, you got it, is um, to correlate to uh, the beginning of Genesis of, of the divine moving across the waters, all right? Mm-hmm. So the waters 
are the complete potential and and then there's this sort of okay so now we have this sort of this first separation that there's that there's something going on right above and below okay so, duality so the all drawings not all drawings but uh, uh, most drawings start with a horizon line, okay? So now you have a structure. Of course, you're going from a point to a line, going from one dimension to two dimensions, all right? And that too. Okay, so and this... I'm so also just going to say that uh, plug for these rulers, these are fabulous because they have cork on the bottom. And oh, wow. Slide. So when you're doing your drawings, you know, oftentimes yeah. the ruler will slip if it's plastic. What kind of ruler is it? Uh, the brand is H E L I X Helix. Okay, it's and a flexible non-skid yeah. ruler, and and our stuff it's is very old. helpful. Our stuff cool. is old, so we're hoping that it seems like the the kind of compass that we have is still easily available. Okay. So, right, so now the first thing you're going to do from the horizon line is to draw a circle, and for this drawing, you're going to make your um, point on the line just about a third of the way over because we're going to eventually be drawing the two circles. Okay. All right. All right. So, so, so most... I don't want it too big. Most geometry to... drawings start with a circle. All right. Let me just move this in a little bit because it's too big. So what we have is a compass that has, because to use it on, on a large scale, it has an extension arm on wow, it. Wow. I was like, that's pretty cool. It's got like a little... <laughs> Yeah, the brand, on, yeah the, <laughs> the brand on this is Alvin, A-L-V-I-N. And, and it has a little uh, doodad that hooks in here that um, can hold markers. So you can use different colors and things like awesome. that. Okay. Interesting stuff. Okay. So it's helpful to lay the compass sort of on its more. side. Hmm? You can go over a little more. And more? Yeah, because you're making the vesica. You want the vesica in the middle. Oh, okay. Or, or, right. or open it up a little more. Oh, maybe I'll open it more. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. So put your compass point in and make sure it's firm so that it holds. Okay. Now the proper way is to hold the top here and s swing your circle. It's hard to do with an extension on the compass. But the compass is, is the extension of your hand. Okay. And you see those sacred geometry um, medieval drawings where, where God is pointing down like that where the where god's hand basically turns into the compass oh, right. from which, from which uh, the, the the world is created right okay so we're now gonna, we're gonna put in the a and b or? yeah so then you put in the and then then you can start mark, marking dots which makes a convenient way to talk about where to where we're going to go with things and where to put things so you're going to put a point a and a point b there so now we have a circle and while the circle is also representative of the absolute of, of oneness, but now it's 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 a, it's a oneness we can talk about. Okay. Right? We can say you can say a circle has qualities. You can say um, every point on the line is equidistant from the radius, right? Mm -hmm. you know, so it's a slight step down from the absolute, the ineffable. You know, we're just lost in it. So this is this is this is um, something that we can talk about, right? So, so, so this is a circle. Be careful to mark as we go, because we will be using these letters as reference points. Okay, so A and B. Right, so now the circle has entered into the, uh, the mythic, what, we, what we've been calling the imaginal realms. Um, so now you're going to take the compass point, you're going to keep the same radius, and sometimes, sometimes they move, especially uh, this one, so you, sometimes you have to double check to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have a, they have a mind that it's living too, right? Yeah, <laughs> <a> mind <laughs> I can't find the same. Okay, so I'm going to go here. Yeah, so you put your compass on point B. Okay. So go to angle your point so you get it. You can see it clearly and make sure it's firm in there. Press okay. it in just a little. And now you're drawing the second circle. Okay. Yeah. And that's the middle point you're starting from, right? Right. Okay. The original point. Yep. Very good. Okay. So, so boom. So we have a second circle, and you can mark um, these two points, C and D. C to the left. Yeah. So now, all right, so this is what we sometimes call the original sacrifice. Okay. Of the one to the many. 
and this is what really what is behind this drawing is the proportions mm -hmm. of how you get from the one into the manifest world into 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 multiplicity. All right. Okay. So you have, or the Tao Te Ching says the one gets the two, the two begets the three, okay. and the three begets the ten thousand things. Okay. This is okay. So that's from the Tao Te Ching, very famous this, line. This is the three. So this shape here is the Vesica Pisces, yep. also known as a um, fish bladder. But that's 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 a technically that's what the word uh, Pisces defines as. Right? Pisces is fish. All right. Um, thus, the, thus the fish as the symbol for Christianity. Okay. Right. Uh, the age of Pisces. It's also known as um, as the mandorla, which means almond. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, it's also known as the. Uh, there's also another interesting. It's also known as the womb of chaos yep. and the womb of the goddess of night. Okay. All right. So the goddess of night again is the uh, is is the the unmanifest substrate through which all things are born. All right. So this you can see is is the womb that everything comes out of. Everything is born out of that. Okay. Shape. All right. Okay. So and maybe even quickly you want to bring the the the, the art that's under the. So anyway, just to show you uh, how this has been used in, say, medieval cathedrals. So I'm going to put this right where the vesica is, and you can see yeah. Christ emerging so, out of the vesica. Yeah. So you have Christ, you have Mary in those, you have uh, the Buddha often in, in, this, in this thing. So what it is, it's the womb of creation, all right? Okay. So, so this is the basic form. And this is an amazing sculpture because look at all the swirls in here. Yeah. This is all moving, living. These you could see as the waters. Okay, so yeah. all manifestation coming out of the chaos of the original waters. Okay. And again, and, the vesica. and again, you can look at it as the sacred marriage, the divine. Yeah, good, I think that's it. Then, you know, the divine male and the divine female, the marriage of the two creating this, this place of balance. Okay. From which, from which, the, the highest can be born and the highest is going to be represented by these um, these uh, these various proportions. So we're going to mark um, P and E where the circles intersect. E okay. And F, sorry, we're marked to E well, and F. We did do, so e on the e top, F on the bottom. Okay. So E on the top, I'll give you like my red pen for this. E on the top. Okay. And F on the bottom. All righty. Okay. And then you're going to draw a line from E to F. Now, another helpful hint when you're drawing your lines, especially if you're just using a pencil, it's easier. Um, I've got a marker today, but ordinarily you'll just be using a pencil. But put your pencil on the dot and move your ruler up to the pencil. Ah, instead of placing your ruler in that, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, because that allows for the thickness of the pencil. Yes. Then line up with your other, whoops, with the other line, other dot, and draw your line. Gotcha. Okay, so now that we have line EF, we have our first proportion. Because we're gonna, the proportions are all based on the fact that the radius of the circle that we began with is one. Okay. Right? So here's one, here's one, here's one, right? They're all one because they're all yeah. made of the same, of the two circles of the same size, right? Yeah. So that means the line from E to F is the square root of three. Okay. So now we can get into so e to mathematics F, of why that's true. This line. But that, I think that might be a little too... Square root of three. Uh, that's probably a little too far for an introductory drawing. Okay. You know... But um, so so this line from E to F is square root of three, and maybe you want to put it up here or something. Or oh yeah, yeah, that's kind of fun because we get end up with the numbers. So, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to give the um, I'm going to give the decimal the decimal to it. So the square root of three is is one point seven three two. One point. Seven, three, two. All right. So again, this is one. If this is one, this is one point seven three two, or the square root of three. 
Okay. So, so now we have our first, now we've gone from the one to the two into threeness. Okay. So once you have threeness, then you can one, have three. three. Okay. Right because, right, because even if, let's say, for example, say, say from A to D is an octave. Okay. Right. And, but you only have, so if you keep on hitting that string, it's one note. Okay. The, the musical invariance, if you push it in half and you strike that note again, it's going to be one octave higher, right? You take a guitar okay. string, it's going to be vibrate at twice the rate. Because it's shorter. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you, okay. if you cut it in half, this is also supposedly discovery of Pythagoras. You cut the string in half, it vibrates twice as fast, and you get an octave higher. That, but, explains, that explains my hyperactivity. Somebody cut right. the string in half, and I... <laughs> Because I'm short. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You, 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 got, you got twanged. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the point being that, but you only still have the same note. Okay. Right. You're stuck with the same note. You can go octave to octave. if you're with tunis, you can go octave to octave to octave, but you're always at the same note. So you can't make music. Right. Okay. You can go from do to do. So then, but once you have the square root of three, now we have proportion. Okay. We have we have something that, that that's that's a that's a different different string length, and now we have a different note. Okay. And the more proportions you use, because that, that's how that's how the the the, um, the octave is divided. Mm -hmm. um, three to four, four to three, these different proportions, and that's how you get the musical scale, and that's how you get music, and that's how you get life. I'm just giving another metaphor okay. to show how this is working. A lot of this will be explained. I noticed that there was a book on quadrivium that was in your list of recommended things, and right. some of this explanation of music will be in there, correct? Right. Good. The quadrivium, yeah, Good. the quadrivium was, was, was the four. Yeah, so there's arithmetic, which is number in itself, geometry, which is number in space. Mm -hmm. Then there's um, music, which is number in time. Mm -hmm. and then there's astronomy, which is number in space and time. Yeah. That's the quadrivium. Right, and that quadrivium, is, so it is part of the seven liberal, seven, seven liberal arts, which includes right. the trivium, which is grammar, logic, and reason, or, or grammar, right. logic, and rhetoric, right? Rhetoric. Yes. Right, right. Yes. And, so and, it, those, it, and those seven in medieval times were considered actually the body of Mary. Okay. You know, so yeah. that's a whole other... And for, for a good, for people who have, uh, the, there, there's this book on the quadrivium, for people who don't know enough about the, uh, the trivium, the person out there that has... Uh, probably the most and easiest to understand information on the trivium is Jan Irvin. So if you guys go check out Jan Irvin's information on the trivium, it's very good. There are some great websites out there that, you know, oh, explain yeah. stuff and give a lot of visuals. But again, yeah. this, this is, you know, and we're talking a lot, but this is an actual it's a, a meditation. Yeah. All right. So now you have square root of three. So now from there to complete the threeness, you can draw lines from, you pick another color. Well, yeah. From I, yeah, color we from. did that once. E to, green. So now we're going to make the tr actual triangles that, that um, resonate with, with the square root of three. So you're going to go from E to C. Okay. And also, I'll make a point about these transparent rulers are helpful too. Is that a three-angled ruler? No. It, well, well, it's got a grab on it. It's got a holder on the middle, so it's easy. Gotcha. Enough. Okay. I wasn't sure if it wasn't one of those things that, you know what I'm talking about, that's like a yeah, three-angled yeah, yeah. Oh, you're kidding. I had a nun <laughs> take somebody in the cloakroom oh. and, and break one of those over his butt in three pieces. Oh, <laughs> the good nuns. The good nuns. Okay. The good nuns. Yeah. So that was not a good use of sacred geometry. But, you know, <laughs> but probably one of the most common uses of it. Yeah. <laughs> Allow for the width of your pencil. Okay. You set your other line. Because it makes a difference once you get down the road with a large, if it's a more complicated drawing, yeah, it does make a difference. Accuracy is really yes. important. Yeah, yeah. You can start getting way off track yeah, on a complicated drawing. The, like you yeah. get into like Arabic tile work and all yeah. that sort of stuff. You know. Well, I don't know if that shows up as green, but that's what it is. Okay, and then from okay. B to F and C so to F. So you, you want to make your different uh, shapes different colors, right? So that you can well, really see sometimes them. Is that yeah, what you're doing? I think, so. I think okay. it makes it, it make it makes it a lot more fun, and then it brings things out in different ways. Gotcha. Especially if you're new and you're just learning, it really helps you to identify the different shapes. Yeah, we don't have them handy, but maybe even we can show you a couple of our drawings before we start the second Patreons thing. Some of okay. 
because you know part of it yeah and it was like after you get done with the drawings then you can like color them in you know so yeah. there we so there we also have the sacred geometry of the kite right right we have the kite which is which is the rhombus again okay. these are all four the same size there's a rhombus so the rhombus is sort of the linear version of, of the, the almond history. Okay. All the place in art. I don't know. Probably can't see it now. We have a carpet behind there that's based on. We can show it later. The based okay. on the rhombuses. Okay. Um, so so that's part of it. So now you have an equilateral triangle. Yeah. One one one, and then you have two uh, of them actually. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then the, then the the um the uh, isosceles. Yeah. If you make it an isosceles, the line from here is. Yep. Um, well, that should be half square root of three. So this whole line is square root of three, but we brought, drew both of them in there to just... Uh, so there's, to the equal, there's the equilateral triangles, which are the bigger ones, and then the ones inside of them are the isosceles triangles, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So from there... See, already we're getting multiplicity, mm -hmm. right? So now we have... Sorry. So now we have... Now we've acquired threeness. We have our first um, transcendental proportion coming out of here, square root of three. All right, so now we're going to open, we're going to, we're going to learn how to do uh, one of the basic things in sacred geometry, and that's how to get a perpendicular line. Okay. okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the compass at A and extend a little past um, above. So I can probably... Above the uh, circle here. Slide that out a little okay. More. So we're going to learn how to, it's also how to divide a line exactly in half and get a perpendicular. And I'm going okay. to... So you're going to go from A and then uh, without the cap on the Yeah, plan. well, I'm just doing it so I can get it set up. Yeah. Try to approximate. Well, try to approximate sort of the middle of the circle. Right. So, so how, do, how, do you, how do you know exactly where to put point two? Oh, uh, you'll see. Okay. Right, you'll so, see. So, so, yeah, so you kind of got to. We're just doing a guess. You can figure okay. somewhere above, you know you want to get the midpoint above C here. Okay, oh, Okay. so you're looking for the midpoint above C, so and you don't want it to be up. on the circle, you want it to right. be above the circle. Right, because we're trying to draw a perpendicular from C up here. Gotcha. Down a little more. So you This cut. is just a helpful line. Right, so okay. you cut there, and oh, okay. you the other side of the circle on B, gotcha. and cut the other way. Okay. So this yeah. is so this is one of the most used That's your point. Um, sacred geometry yeah. methodologies. Okay. Okay. So you can see Chris didn't go far enough. See? Even though, and it's interesting too. You think you're 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 you visually got it, but you're you're so not there. Go back. So she's gonna cut that, make that cut. Because I need that X. Okay. okay. Now gotcha. you've got that open. And that's at the midpoint, right above the C. Right. So this is gonna give gotcha. you the perpendicular. So okay. You're gonna do the same thing. At D, so you're going to go from C and D and do the same thing and make X's oh. above and below that circle. Okay. Not okay. here. We're from D, see. from C and D. C, from C and yeah. D. Okay, yeah. got it. So you're going to do the same thing. Cross. What? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. No, you got it. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to cross up, 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 up above and below. So I can just try to get a visual. And, and, I, and I'll say, too, this is a lot easier if you're on a table looking down yes. you know, and having to deal with gravity. So Chris is actually doing a pretty remarkably good job being that we've been out of practice for 20 years. But yeah, but we, we did do, um, we did this twice already and this is our third right. time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah you guys, guys, they put a lot of preparation time into this and we really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun because we haven't done it in about 10 years and I was wanting to get back into it. Yeah. And this was a great way to do it. So okay. I'm really... So what we want to do now is draw within the circle the perpendicular. And if you've done this right, you're going to find that all three of those points line up. Okay. And there's a certain good feeling when all the points line oh, up like yeah. they're supposed to. It's well, it's like when it's like well, in my I'm not going to say golf because in my case it's only ever miniature golf. But it's like uh, when you're able to get it, you know, line the shot right up and get it in the hole. Well, yeah, you know? or, yeah, or yeah. you know, I guess yeah. when you when you stick your landing in uh, in gymnastics, <laughs> that that's a little more complicated. <laughs> That there's a, there, people don't realize how many things actually go into that. They're just like, ah, they stuck, they didn't stick, they whatever. Like the amount of things that have to go right for somebody to stick yeah. a landing on a difficult yeah. scale is, you know, there's a few people who are really amazing at it. If anybody wants to go see like perfection at something like that, go check out videos of Kyla Ross from UCLA. I've never seen uh, somebody able to so meticulously stick landings over and over and over again. 
Now, I think if you wanted to, you could just let those lines go all the way out yeah. and it'd just be kind of fun to, you know, have yeah. it all over the place. Yeah. But ultimately, this yeah. is what we're interested in. All right. Okay. Label these points G, H, I, and J. Okay. G, H, uh, G, H, I, And J, and you might want to also often we we um, we mark the center of a drawing or the first one you do, but in this put in this case we're doing the center of the drawing zero. Is zero point? Yes. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Zero. Or that's the, the zero point. Point. Or it's the zero point, right? Either way. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes if you just do a, a simple drawing, you can. Um, Immediately after you scribe your circle, you can put it around where your compass point went in. Yeah. It's not always easy to see. Okay. You know? So if you yeah. need to find that point again, it makes it much easier. Okay. So sometimes you can just put it right across the, the point where you put your compass in. All right. So we're getting there. So now you connect G to H and I to J. I am just avoiding going over the letters Chris. so we don't. And so here we have now the first square kind of angle. It's a vertical rectangle. Exactly. So now what we've okay. created are two perfect squares. Okay. So we have here circles, ellipses, triangles, squares, rectangle. So we've, we've created all of the major shapes. Yeah. And we can make more out of this. We can get to the, pentag the pentagon, the hexagon. The hexagon is the easiest of all shapes to do. Okay. Um, but this would be, that would be another day. Okay. So what we have now, so now we have two perfect squares. Actually, we have a double square. Now we have four little rectangles and a, a one big rectangle. And uh, yeah, we have all we have sorts of stuff. One big rectangle, which is a double square rectangle. Mm, and, yeah. Let's talk about what and, that is. And, and this, this is the same shape that's done in the king's chamber in the Pyramid, pyramid of Giza. Okay. Of Giza is, it's actually a double cube, but it's a bit on, but from the ground floor, it's a double rectangle. Okay, so that's so that's the uh, the shape in the king's chamber. So that's which okay. is what Chris is writing there along the side. Okay, and what we can get. So now our, we get our next um, transcendental proportion by doing the diagonal of the square from C to H. Okay. All right. So do the diagonal from C to H. And the diagonal of a square is square root of two. Okay. Which is, if I do a really quick Pythagorean theorem, right? Again, these are still the sides of the square are all one, just like the radius of the circle. Right, so if this triangle here, one squared plus one squared is two, and then the hypotenuse then is the square root of two. Okay. So, so that's, that's what makes this diagonal square root of two according to the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, okay. All right. So, Find a decimal so number form. square root of two is 1.414. So I'm just noticing something here in my brain that probably works gymnastically, but uh, it, I, I'm going to ask it now because I may forget by the time we get into the sports section in the second half. So now uh, in that where you just drew the angle, so we have the big square, which would represent like the floor exercise, right? And you just drew, drew a diagonal line and I'm having the awareness that, so all of the tumbling passes, which are the major power, like the, the, the powerful part of the routine, right. it's also the part where, you know, there's the most uh, use of physics or defiance of gravity or whatever, going down those, those angles, right? So is there something... Is there something of an esoteric nature to the path? You know, obviously it makes sense. Why don't they do the, why don't they do the tumbling down the straight way, right? Why do they do the diagonal? I mean, sometimes they'll do a little side pass, 
you know, but all of the major difficulty is done down to diagonals. So I'm wondering if there's something particularly. Uh, an ease. You have an ease. Maybe. An ease, uh, yeah. or if that angle for some reason is better at like a certain amount of defiance of gravity. Um, it's also when I do my visionary stuff, when I close my eyes and I, I, like, I'm sort of going into that realm, I always see like a tether or a cord that's at that same angle and then like a spinning disc on it, which I recognize as myself sort of in space. Yeah. Yeah, and so I'm wondering if that's the same sort of thing, like the tumbling pass is that disc moving up and down the right. diagonal. And there's another thing to add to this, but is that this is, of course, this is a 90 degree angle. This would be, a, so you're moving at a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle. The 45 degree angle is in, within the realms of, uh, of biogeometry, the higher harmonic of gold. Oh, so, oh and you're wanting oh. to win a gold medal. Here we go. Oh. Now we're there. Hey. Very good. And it's also, I believe, it's the angle that a mezuzah, which is a Jewish thing that people place on their door, right? It's, it's at that same angle. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. And if you, yeah. So, so people who use biogeometry in architecture mm -hmm. put a lot of 45 degree angles. And in fact, we had our carpenter who had just done a house for somebody else who was, who was into biogeometry who did the, our, our bathroom for Airbnb, put all these beautiful 45 degree angles within, nice. within the structure. Mm -hmm. And you walk in the bathroom, it's like, it's like the happiest room in the house. No, it's never going to leave the bathroom. <laughs> I know. I know. Like, they room. bring in like war and peace, you know. And then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But one thing I want to uh, acknowledge is your enthusiasm for seeing that. Yeah. And, and how it applies in your life. Mm -hmm. And my contention is that none of this is worth anything unless you can relate it to your lived experience. Yes. And that's what just happened. Yeah. When, when I, when, part of this. I, whenever I'm seeing a possibility, and it doesn't always happen, but wherever there's a possibility to enter into another dimension, another realm, another world, an imaginal world, it always begins for me with at that 45 degree angle. It's like this here, something opens up and you can kind yeah. of go through it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And very, then, very helpful. Okay. And then just uh, one other thing in, in, the, in Greek philosophy, uh, the square root of two represents uh, the logos or the noose. Okay. The noose, is, the oh. noose is, the, is our faculty that connects with the divine. Okay. Right? So, N-O-U-S. And the, and the logos is the, is the pattern Okay. Of the divine behind everything. So they're okay. at two sides of the same coin. So, yeah, yeah logos so actually a, means ratio. Ratio. That yeah. word. Okay. Means logos, ratio. logic. Okay. Um, so, all right, so now we have the square root of two, which again, you know, so now we have, the, again, the, the two-ness and the quaternity, and we have the physicality. Quaternity, right? I like that. Yeah. Like, I can't say that I've heard that word before. I, I may not have ever said it before. <laughs> Did you just make that up? If you did, I really like it. I didn't make it up. I know that. Okay. All right. So the next ratio that we're going to find is going from I to H. We're going to go across to do the diagonal of the, the double square. Okay. Okay. And again, hopefully it's going to go right through O. So this is a diagonal of, a, of a, the rectangle. Yes, of the, okay. yeah, of the double square rectangle or the double rectangle. Okay. And that's... So now we're looking at something closer to like a football field or a soccer field. Right. And I don't Or a know. tennis court. Or a tennis court. <laughs> tennis court. Yeah, tennis court is not quite it's 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 in the realms, but it's not quite a double square. And especially gotcha. with, the, with a doubles court, it, it, it it's a little it's different. different. It's wider, yeah. But I did, yeah, I have to go look at I did try to do some numbers on it and it's um it's kind of closer to a square root of two square. Gotcha. Uh, it's not, so it's not a, like a double square. There's no, you know, it's hard to find. Anyway, um, again, using the Pythagorean theorem, if this is one and this is one, so, so we're going to do this triangle here. So this is two. Gotcha. Two times two is four. So there we have a large isosceles triangle, one right? One is one times one is one. So four plus one is five. So then this uh, this angle is the square root of five. Okay. So the square root of five now, now the square root of five is intimately tied in with the phi ratio, the golden mean ratio. Okay. So 
so, and so the square root of five is the is the square root of, of life. Now we can get we get into this. The square root of five is um, is two point two three six. Then we get into this later because um, something that got a little distorted in the realms of sacred geometry is that the the six petaled flower is the is the considered the flower of creation and the five pointed flower is the flower of life okay. and and it's a real subtle thing but when you think about sixes you think about the fabric of creation and when you think about five you think about the golden mean and the creation of life okay. and 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 we'll, we'll talk about that a little and in bit. some cases and we'll get into this at some point you also see a four petal thing which you called the fourness which represents the elements Right, mm. right. So the four, the four elements, and yeah. the, the, again, right. the, yeah, and we the, can do that. The physicality of the world. At the end of the drawing, we bring in those two missing square roots. We'll bring okay. them in and and see what they add up to. It's okay. Important. So we've got okay. the square root of five. Um, what we want to do. All right. So now, from here, then we can get the golden mean rectangle. Okay. All right. So what you're going to do. And there'll be a little formula for those who need that to help. But you're going to run, you can open the compass from O, so the halfway of the square, of the, of the square here, up to H. Okay, so I need to slide this in. So in other words, to get the golden mean, we'll show you how to get a golden mean rectangle on anything. Close it up. And I'm just going to test with the cap on, Steve. Okay. I'm doing this O to H? O to H. Okay. Then I'll take my cap off. It's going to be very different when you're doing your own drawing. You're not going to be using magic markers. You can just use a pencil. Pencil. And pencil. You don't have pencils. all this cumbersome taking the cap off and on. Okay. Sideways. Put your point in. Get as precise as you can to that point of H. Okay. Now you're going to drop that down to the original horizon line. Okay. I'm going to make that point L. Um, no, what are we up to? K. No, Check K. your notes. K. That's K. <laughs> okay. So what that gives us... Wait, okay, so where was I? Hold on, I see H. Where's I? I is here. H, I is down here. Okay, okay. got you. All right. Square the double square. Perfect, okay. Right. So now we drop down. So this is what gives you the golden mean cut so in other words this so and and so now we're going to make the full we'll draw the full um rectangle but this is the golden mean cut right here c to b okay c to k okay okay in other words with the golden mean the ratio of the um larger part okay to the smaller part is the same as the larger part to the whole line. All right, so in other words, okay. it's a repeating- Repeating pattern. That's what makes the golden mean magic. In other, words, in other words, our arms, for example, right? So this is a golden mean cut in our arm for our elbow. I guess well, we'll put it on camera. All right, you so can do- So if you do from your wrist to your elbow- This is okay. a golden mean cut. Is a ratio, okay, this is golden mean. That, so this is to the whole. The hand is to the hole, as this hole right. is to the, all the, way up to the shoulder. It replicates okay. over and over again. The I ratio, the relationship okay. is the same. This, so okay. let me just, this is a golden mean spiral. Go ahead. Okay. Roll the fingers. So this is. We can't, this. we can't see you. You're below the. Uh, oh, okay. There we go. Okay. So the wrist to the elbow relationship, this size is to this size. Okay. The same ratio or relationship as this is to this. Okay. Gotcha. And the same okay. ratio is from our navel to the top of our head to the navel to the floor. So if the this... bottom of our feet. So are we, are, are we are a golden mean cut at our navel. Okay. And is the golden mean is the same as the Fibonacci sequence? No. Yes. Almost. Almost. Uh, okay. Second. Okay. Meanwhile, Chris is, so, so we're just going to finish the rectangle. Okay. And um, 
So what you're going to do is is uh, is open up from C to K. Okay. All right. So you want to get finish up this rectangle. You want to make it a rectangle. So okay. Put your compass point on C. Open your compass all the way out to K as accurately as possible. Okay. Okay. Move it from C up to G to the top of the square. No, no, from the point from C up to G. Oh. Really? Yes. Okay. yes. Trust me. <laughs> this is where a teamwork is really good. All right. And then you're going to make a cut. Oh, a cut. Meaning yeah. Because yeah, you're going to extend That's a line. cut. Right. When he says a cut, it okay. means a little short line. It's a little split. Okay. All right. Now you're going to, now you're going to measure the same thing from C to G. Okay. So we went from C to K and then from G to, I'm confused. A We're going to make another point up here because you want to make this. Like so the thing we little, did over there with the other little X's. Okay. So what we want to do is make this a rectangle, right? Okay. Okay. I got rectangle. You. Well, we got the bottom line. So now we can, now we can extend it. So this is, so now we have the length up here. But we don't quite have the direction. I mean, you can kind of put the ruler. Gotcha. Okay. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. But we want to be accurate. Okay. So now we're going to move it from, now we're going to close the compass from C to G. This is not something you do in a hurry. So it's nice to be, you know, in your mm -hmm. quiet of your room, you can yeah. so and move that over to K, move that point of the compass from C to K. And then gotcha. Move the line above it. Can you, am I in the way? Can you see that? Yeah. So now, so now gotcha. we have, gotcha. and you can make that point L. Okay. And then, and then draw the lines out to finish the golden mean rectangle. So okay. Getting, uh, towards the end, we're getting, uh, um, well, this is the end of the drawing part of it anyway. Okay. So this is the last part of our drawing. So now we've gotten the try out of this vesica, out of this womb of creation, we've gotten the, the, all these roots, including, including phi. Now okay. So now we get the golden mean rectangle drawn in there. And another fun drawing to do is to use the golden mean rectangle. This is, and this is too far afield for today, and to make the golden mean spiral with yeah. it. Yeah. And then go from L to K. Yeah, I'm a little bit off. Okay. Say it again. L to K. And then you can draw on the rectangle if you want. So you can, you know, Chris has like a yellowish pen that you can use to like uh, highlight various things that you want to talk about. So. so you see how important it is to be accurate. I can see here, I'm just a wee little bit off. There's a space there, but mm -hmm. not a big deal. That's okay. Yeah. And I'm also, and, and I'm only saying this because we're going to move into a discussion about sports next, but also now if you look at all these circles you've made in that line up top, you're starting to see the outline and like of the shape of like what a skating rink would be. This? The round edges, no, no, so, like, look, we have, if, oh, I mean, like a full if, you, were to, if you were to round that, yeah, so it's yeah, interesting, yeah. we have all of the different athletic courts represented, sort of, in this. Right, and this would be, yeah. like, use a, and this is the threeness in there. Yep. So, do you want to highlight the, uh, all right, the so golden mean rectangle? All right, and so, so, I guess I'm going to take a nice blue. Thing. It's also, I'm just thinking about this now. I never think about figure skating, but like all those figures that they, you know, they don't really show them and they don't have them as part of the Olympics anymore, but they used to have that as a major part where they showed the geometry of the cuts in the ice, right? When you, Fig go, to, uh, figures. When you go to the roller skating rink, they have them drawn on there. And uh, I just talked about, you know, uh, for me, some of the memories of programming happened in roller skating rinks. And those, when I see those geometries, on the roller skating rink, it makes me think of some of the sacred geometry programming you did. So I'm thinking about the figures uh, in the ice right now too. Yeah, yeah, right. And they would make, and that's why it's called figure skating because that, yeah. that was the point of making making the actual figures. Yep. Okay. So while Chris is drawing that in, I'm going to tell you the difference between the Fibonacci sequence and the um, golden mean. And the golden mean. So the golden mean is. So the difference is 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 the golden the Fibonacci sequence are the actual numbers in this world and the golden mean is the proportion of them. Okay. So the transcendental, so the Fibonacci sequence is, is an additive sequence, each one previously. So it's part of the same thing, but it's not the same thing. Well, no, it's exactly the same thing, but it's only a step down into this world. Okay. 
So if I were to write this Fibonacci sequence down on the bottom here, I don't know if you can... No, you can't. Here. You can. I can see where he was going to write. Okay, I need a bigger pen. All right, so... He was going to use so it's an a fine point. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not so, work. so you're adding one plus one. You're adding the previous number right. to it. Yes. So one plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three <laughs> is really hard to do. Three plus two is five. Three is five. All right. Then five plus three is eight. eight. I got 13, you. 21. Yes. 34. 55 and 89 all right those are and it goes on now, what know. happens now what happens now we now um chris hasn't written in but phi oh anyone want to put that in that. phi is 1.618 that's and it's another repeating decimal so the symbol for phi so is go, a circle with a straight line through it's the greek letter phi okay, okay. and what is it 1.618 oh i know what happens with the Fibonacci numbers? All right, so, so for example, you have a, the way nature expresses itself. So, for example, with the fam most famously sunflower head. Mm -hmm. right, sunflower head has 55 going in one direction, 89 going in another direction. Okay. All right, the, the ratio of 55 to 89 is really close to 1.618. Okay. What happens is because you can't, because it's it's a, it's a you lose something number. stepping down into this world, right? And gotcha. Each, and and just uh, like we lost the part of ourselves when we fell into this world from the imagination. Yes, exactly. Yes. We lost our we lost part of our divine nature. Gotcha. Okay. Right. But but this is as close as we can get. So okay. what happens is each of these ratios three to five, five to eight, eight to thirteen, thirteen to twenty one, is slightly higher and slightly lower okay. than this ratio. Okay. Like three to five is one point six. Uh, five to eight is one point six two five. So they go either side of it, and they get closer and closer, off into infinity. But they never get there. Okay. Speaking. Gotcha. Um, now the relationship of phi to the square root of five, because we've shown it kind of geometrically, you can see it comes off the square root of five line, then you drop down. The relationship is expressed in the equation phi equals, and I guess you can put it up here. Um, one plus the square root of five over two. Here? Yeah, the whole thing over two. All right, two. say it again. So one? Um, equals one. One plus square root of, uh, square root of five, and then the whole thing over two. Okay, so square root of five, which again is in the pentagon, if you draw, if you draw a, um, a pentagram, the relationship between the lines are all, are all the phi ratio. They all go okay. into the ratio, which is why, why the, the pentagram is connected with life and then, and then in a negative way it's connected with death. Okay, so can you, oh, okay, so can you just since you brought this up, can you explain, because there's a lot of people, particularly people with religious backgrounds, who even people who are really ready to step away from some of that, there's something about the pentagram or a five-pointed star that really scares them, bothers them, makes them afraid of information related to it. Can you give us just a, really a more holistic understanding of the pentagram that can kind of free people up to be able to explore that without so much anxiety? It's really been abused. Yeah. Um, yeah. Draw, can you just draw one freehand? What do you maybe? want me to do? Maybe, I don't know. Just draw, draw, draw a freehand uh, pentagram. Pentagram? Uh, yeah, into a circle. Let's so see this is going to be a real approximation. That's and fine. It just you, this is part of just what's coming up spontaneously. So let's just deal with it while it's up. You know. Yeah. So all right. So this is a pentagon. You draw the lines. You have the pentagram. So the gon is the. So I'm going to do a point and spokes coming out. Just to go go corner to corner. Corner to corner. Yeah. Go. Well, you're going to make a. Oh, draw, I just draw the star inside. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so a, a pentagon, gon means the, the, the outside shape, a gram means the inner, uh, inside. inside star kind of shape that's within it. Okay. Right? So, again, so Chris has done a pretty good job here. So the, this cut is the same as this cut. Yes. That's you can draw the, the, draw the star into here if you want it. You can use this as a basis. So you already have, so the golden mean, which again, goes back to you talking about the, the, the higher harmonic of gold. The, 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 this 
this is this is why a, a pen a credit card mm -hmm. this shape yeah i get it because it feels good in your hand yeah right so yeah. that's again the negative use of that of this natural attraction to this yes. particular shape right yes. because it resonates with you know with your every with every your part of our being out. yeah so so part of, so so the golden mean is inside this okay uh, so and so it's all about and you make you can make circles and stars so it's all about creation coming in okay about the phi ratio it's all in the basis of how we are created it's also um it also has a this great this angle right here i can you want me to do another color um can you give me another color so this, hang, this, this angle here is the um so if you take the angle over here this is this triangle is a very famous this is 72 degrees this is 72 degrees and this is 36 degrees okay. so this, this is one of the most sacred triangles which is okay. also the pentagram again and the 72 is the opposite of the 108 which is another incredibly sacred number. Which, that's one of the numbers you really focus on correct yeah number eight number 108 is the number of, 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 of projecting from this world to the divine world so go ahead what do you mean it's the opposite no no it's just it's the it's the complement oh compliment the complementary okay. angle okay. this whole line is 180 this is 72 this is 108 okay 72 okay. of course is is the uh, 72 years which is this kind of a standard human lifetime is one day in the whole cosmic year the procession of this of the procession of the equinoxes right okay so the procession of the equinoxes is called sometimes a platonic year that's twenty five thousand nine hundred and twenty years so you got the mayan calendar very close to that with twenty six thousand years okay so but in one day this is one of the, the fabulous things in one um so one day of the cosmic of the whole cosmic cycle right is 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 uh sorry 72 years is one day in the complete cosmic cycle okay right? in the whole cosmic year 72 is one year it just so happens that we breathe in the course of a day 25,920 breaths ah right at the rate of uh, very and, interesting and so that's breath. when they say that breath is life right breath is life. so so breath so 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 this is, this is another one of those amazing things so the um yeah so 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 each um yeah each hour is like a sign gotcha in the in the in the, in the day well, and so i'm even looking at that little green arc you've dr drawn there and to me I, i'm immediately thinking of what it looks like when the sun is kind of going down over the horizon rising up over the horizon so each day yeah very good so yeah yeah right so that's, that's the 180 degrees so there's so much anything that's this powerful and at the source of life can then be turned around so okay. and, this is, and why people feel well the, i think the fear of it has become ingrained and i think the catholic church Mm -hmm. has a boatload to do with that yeah um you know and, and the christianity and, and taking and again this was the sign of the pythagoreans this is how they knew each other okay you know they whatever it is but they were so like everything else it's what you do with it this is a powerful oh, this is a powerful symbol and you can right. create life or you can cause death with it right and so okay. theoretically you know by turning it upside down you can yeah. enhance the negative qualities, yeah. but okay. you don't have to, but it's not necessary, but that's part gotcha. of what you're doing. Too much oxygen can kill you. Right? Mm -hmm. so, you know. Too much water can kill you. Too much, yeah. Yeah. Anything, yeah. anything, you can take anything. Um, gotcha. So is Thanks. this uh, in your, on your uh, 108 in your book? On your yeah, yeah, All I right, have so this and this triangle. It's, it's in my- um, Catabat Catabatic winds? Yes, pick it up there. Which is, so doo -doo -doo. This, is this is my book. This is, uh, I have a section on 108 and also on the sacred geometry of baseball. The baseball is stitched 108 times. Yeah, all right. We're going anyway. to talk a little bit about the sacred geometry of baseball in the next yeah, segment. This is, so, yeah. this is kind of how the... Um, oh, very nice. Okay. How it goes in there. Um, but anyway, so maybe one little magic trick. I know we've probably been gone on for a while. That's all right. Um, all right. So, so this is really interesting. So here you have all these transcendental, num transcendental numbers, and actually I'm going to read something from 
from actually as a quote in my book from Keith Critchlow about the trend about these proportions. Can I read that? Just yeah. So you, okay. So this is what he wrote, Keith Critchlow. I'm quoting him in my book. Um, this is from his book. Um, this is from a book called Homage to Pythagoras, which is a bunch of essays on Pythagoras. Proportion is the key to arriving at a transcendental unity from the polarity of existence. Thus, proportion, as it has been consciously employed in an architectural or structural sense, is traditionally symbolic of the Gnostic function. So this is how you get the Gnostic, the spiritual aspect, into architecture using gotcha. these proportions, right? Okay. So indeed, ultimately, the transcendental proportional ratios, square root of two, square root of three, square root of five, five and five, the golden mean, are metaphysical principles. Okay. They be embodied in matter to give it significance and enable the part to contribute to and relate to the whole. So I thought that was a good quote. Very good. And something Very good. Do. So one of the little, so then I would do a little, a little mathematical magic. So if you add these numbers, and Chris, you're going to show off <laughs> her, 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 her mathematical acumen. Yes, now that she's a math genius. All right. <laughs> Not. <laughs> So these are only the three decimals, but again, you know, they're going off into infinity, and it still works. Okay. So 8 and 6 is 14, 22. No, no. No? Oh, see, already I'm wrong. No, 8. What? 8? 6 14. is 14. 14. 20. The total eight, is 20. 20. And 2 is 20. Right. Yeah. So you see how? That's right. We all do this together. Carry the 2. 5, 6, 9, 10. Carry the 1. 8. 9, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, right? Right. So you add these, these numbers together, they come out to exactly 7. 7. Which is the number, which in Greece is the number of the goddess, the number of the virgin goddess, especially uh, associated with Athena, but also associated with... And other. the Vesica Pisces is the feminine, yeah. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Um, and I guess there's one other thing we wanted to bring in, I guess, and that's, and that's if you want to get into just a little bit of, of gematria, how it relates to this, Greek yeah. gematria. Yeah. And then you were going to also talk about the missing square roots of... One and four. All right, so we can, and then so if you want to even take this further, so let's do because you have all right. So if you add in the square root of one and the square root of four, all right, and the square root of one is one. One and the square root of four is two. Is two, you have the perfect ten. Ten. Ah, so there we have some gymnastics. And if you, yeah, if, if anybody one, has noticed the way they've destroyed gymnastics by taking away the ten, okay. I have no, have they? Uh, I didn't really, have. I haven't. Yeah. Thought. So in elite, uh, in elite, if, if in all of the levels and even into college gymnastics, it's still based on ten. But they moved the Olympic level, the elite level of gymnastics to an open-ended system, so that because you know they're trying to use the scores as a ranking as opposed to saying something is perfect or not which I understand is part of making the sport more fair. It's also made it confusing and, and not so special in a way. But, yes, so that's kind of interesting. <laughs> okay, right. So it's, and it's also in, in the other famous symbol we want to draw, tetractus, tetractus yeah. is the Pythagorean, it's called the tetractus, which is the four levels of, of, with the ten dots or ten pebbles. Mm -hmm. And from this, you get the musical scale. You get all sorts of all the all the ratios and things like that. But this would be the the perfection in, in for the Pythagorean would be the ten. I love that. Yeah. R. And and also a yeah. To, T A C. To track. A C to track. Tus. track to something like Y S. Y S. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Petractus. Okay. Mm. Very good. So, and I guess we can just do this kind of quickly yeah, this if you is want. Fun, because so, so, so then this yeah. also relates. So the geometry also 
relates back to a bunch of things in Greek, Greek mythology, and also relates to things like the 150 uh, fishes uh, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament story with Peter catches 153 fishes. All these numbers are significant. Okay. Right? Not random. So, so one of the interesting things is that the, relate, the ratio here, so across the bottom here we can make Hermes 353. So this line, this line which, which, is, which is the one, right, the original radius, mm -hmm. all right? So if you make that 353, which is the, the gematria for the god Hermes, right? Hermes also Mercury, um, God bless Hermes, is, uh, is, is retrograde right now. Seriously retrograde right now. I told you the story that my, uh, the remote for my uh, television stopped turning on my television, and now turns on my uh, DVD player. You must be a friend of my father. Which is so bizarre. <laughs> it's so bizarre. So, but this ratio, so if, if Hermes is 353, the ratio works out perfectly that this original square root of three line is the gematria of Zeus, which is 612. Ah. So in other words... One to square root of three is three fifty three to six twelve, right? Yeah, I think, I think that's fairly fairly Did clear. Three fifty three twice would be seven twelve. Right, seven seven oh six. Seven oh six, right? So right. how are we at six twelve? I'm confused. All right, so no six twelve. In other words, three fifty three is to one as six twelve is to square root of three. Gotcha. Okay. 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 Right. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Right. So that's a, so the same ratio is, is, is shows up in the gematria. So we're talking about proportions that's again here. Yeah. Right. 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 So that's this whole line, the original line going through the vesica. Okay. All right. And just and then this other line, which is from A to D, comes out to be one thousand sixty one. which is the um, gematria for Apollo. Okay. So this, this can go further. Um, there's a great book called uh, Jesus Christ's S-U-N of God, which gets into um, all this sort of Gnostic Christian symbology mm -hmm. and, um, and the gematria and the, uh, and the, and the, uh, uh, it's, by, it's by, written by David Fiedler, F-I-D-E-L-E-R. It's a classic. Um, gets into the gematria, gets into the geometry, gets into my the mythology. So this is 161, and it's also, it's 161 is also for the Pythia. Oh, so that goes all the way out to D? D, from A to okay. D. Mine's so the, the Pythia is the, is yeah. the serpent that, um, that Apollo defeats at the Oracle of Delphi when he takes over the Oracle of Delphi. Oracle of Delphi ran for thousands of years before Apollo got there and was run. And they even call the, um, the, uh, the, the seeresses, the women who do the Oracle, they call them the, the Pythia. Okay. Right? That, that this, this deep underworld deity, this sort of deep serpent was the, um, was that who spoke through them originally. And then at some point, Apollo, who has the same gematria as the Pythia takes over, um, defeats, the uh, the Pythia and then becomes the Oracle. Okay. So, so that's the mythology that's also contained um, within. So some of these things that they're talking about, guys, I'm not sure what they are either. So that's the beauty of YouTube: is hit pause and go look them up. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 So, you know, yes. I'm doing the best I can to try. Yeah. To no, you're doing great. There's, I mean, you guys are doing great. Yeah. So I, so that's I with no religious background, so it, it, I have no religious background at all. So sometimes some of the terminology and just even the way, the kind of speaking or whatever, I have to figure out what that means before I can proceed with certain yeah, I, information. Yeah. I think a lot of us really don't have the background in mythology either. So no, yeah. some people don't even know who Pythagoras is, you know, yeah. so it's, it's a good introduction. So yeah. you hear the words, you, you know, you're first introduced to them, you just let it percolate. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of research and expand your, your horizons. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we're, uh, we went a little bit over here in this first segment. Do you guys have anything else that we need to do to finish out this first segment? And then we'll take a quick, quick break and come um, yeah, back. I think, 
I think we hit it. You know, I think we, we got everything we wanted to talk about. I think, that, I think that was amazing. Yeah, I think that was excellent. That, if you follow that list and follow along and do the drawing with it and you end up with this, you're just going to feel like a genius. Yeah. <laughs> come back two weeks later and you open this up and you look and say, holy moly, I did that? Right. Me yeah. in the clunky corner? Yeah. <laughs> You're All not right. clunked anymore. No, and yeah. it's stars on my well, lapel. You've, you've unclunked. All right, guys. So right, this, right. this ends up the first hour. Why don't you tell – so this is closing the public segment. Why don't you tell people where they can find you? Okay. So the website of our publishing company where you can get my books and many other fine books is uh, logosophiabooks.com, L-O-G-O-S-O-P-H-I-A books. Dot com, logos, and Sophia, okay. and um, and uh, and then um, we've been having uh, we last Friday we were on uh, Robert Phoenix's show for his Friday forecast usually the first Friday of the month so we were on that so that's uh, that's a nice regular gig and um, and hopefully this will turn into a nice regular yeah, gig. it's going to be a nice regular gig all right yeah. excellent so um, this wraps up the first hour if you haven't joined us on patreon yet please do you can go to patreon.com forward slash off planet media and join us in the second hour we will be taking some of this stuff to the mat and talking about the sacred geometry of sports it's probably going to be a little bit shorter segment since we went over on this one but we will see you guys on the other side we're going to take a little break see okay you. Alright. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. This is Off Planet Radio. Okay. 